Hi guys, it's um, me again from Canoe Bushcraft on uh, this little vid. I'm going to go through some of my uh, my tools that I normally take out of me, um, even on a one day hike or plod around, whether it's Long Beach, um, through the woods, you know, up on the hills or what have you. I have, you know, uh, I'll take a certain sort of tools that I take, do you know what I mean? Um, and also for an overnight, if I know I'm just doing the one overnight, I will take something a little bit different, you know, swap and change. And obviously anything over than that, you know, three or four days, five days, what have you, then I'll have, you know, I'll swap about again. So, uh, right. But also there's, there's three items that I'd always have, which are classed as tools, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's one day or week or what have you. Um, right then. First is out of these three will be my Leatherman Wave. You know, as the pliers, everyone knows, you know, um, I've basically used all the tools on this, um, apart from maybe the saw, but I think I have used the actual saw for um, when I was doing a bit of carving. I found it you know, quite handy. I mean, it's got a good edge on it, it does, it does work. But I wouldn't be chopping up logs with it or anything like that, you know, sawing up logs with it. But no, it's alright for a bit of carving, you know, if you want to, yeah. And I've actually used a serrated blade on this as well, believe it or not. Because on the beach, if I'm out for a couple of days and I'm making a shelter, as most of you know, you walk along the beach, there's always like a little nook or cranny where it just gathers all the crap that gets washed up. And a lot of it's either mooring ropes off the big boats, you know, the tankers and that, bits of it go in. Or, you know, if it's quite commercial, that sort of area, you'll get a load of fishing type rope for pots and stuff like that that they drop, or, or whatever, you, more little mooring ropes. So I use that charade blade. Um, it's great for cutting through cordage anyway. And also, using my day knife, to cut through that sort of stuff, it's full of sand, it's been, you know, and salt and all the rest of it, and I, you know, no, I don't want to dull the edge on my decent knife, if you like, so I'll use that, but no, great bit of kit, it's always with me, no matter how long I'm out for, I've got a nice little pouch, it's got a little belt loop, which I never use, um, but no, that will either set in a, in a chest pocket, or cargo pocket on my trousers, something like that. But it's a great little bit of kit, and that goes with me all the time. The other thing I always take is the DC4. It's got the different um, grades on it, two different grades. But it's ideal if my main knife gets a little bit dull, I can just spruce it up with that, you know. And the third item I always take is my Laplander. Um, you know, it's it's pretty much foolproof really, you know, I can buy blades for it to replace, I haven't got to buy the whole unit again, which is quite cool. Some of the disposable ones you get are great, you know, but they last, once they're, they're dull, you've got to chuck it all away and buy a whole new unit again. <clears throat> so I guess, you know, I mean some of them you probably pick them up for about three quid, and they're alright for a couple of days. but. Um, you know, you do that three or four times, you just well buy one of these. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, no, great bit of kit, always have it, even on day hike. Um, if I'm in an area where I've got permission, you know, I know I can have a little fire, it's just, you know, ideal. So, that always comes with me. So, my main little one day knife is um, it's a custom knife, it's made by a guy called Richard. Um, beefy, I think he's known as. Um, it's got a great little snug leather pouch for it. I have it on the lanyard. I don't wear it on the belt. Those people that do know me know that I don't like wearing things around my waist on a belt. I find it really irritating. I'd rather have this over my head and over one arm, and it sits basically. Uh, get this in shot. It probably sits underneath my armpit. You know and I just much prefer it like that, you know, and if I want to take it off, put it in a 
because I normally have this little bag with me, it's like the old medi pack. That's where my lap rounder sits, fire stick, um, sharpness stone, and stuff like that. And you know, I can always pop it in there. I know exactly where it is. You know, it's it's safe. I'm not going to lose it. So yeah, so that's the sheath. A little lanyard, and obviously I can use this cordage if I need to, if I'm desperate. So the knife itself. Um, there's my hand. You can sort of see. It's roughly. Yeah. So it's quite dinky, but it's nice. It's got um, it's a one steel. It's got a nice scanny grind on it. I do like the scanny grind; it's so easy to resharpen. Um, it's around four mil thick, I think. Um, it's got the old bird's eye scales on it. Um, it's got some nice red liners. I don't know what the quality of this video is going to be like. I don't even know if you can see behind me. It just looks white on this while well, I'm looking at it. It's actually fog. <laughs> it's full on. So, uh, but yeah, no, that's a great little knife. It's um, been part finished at the top, which I wanted to kind of like the look of it. But it fits in the hand really nice. I've got full control of that blade. It's firm. It, it's yeah, it's nice. It is nice. Great for knocking up little feather sticks, food prep, and whatever else I feel like doing. You know, little tasks. But it surely does the job. So uh, yeah, great bit of kit. So that's the uh, my little day knife. There we go. Right. So if I'm out, say for an overnighter. Um, I would take those three items that I showed you, the uh, multi-tool, lap lander and the sharpening stone. My main bushy knife is, um, same again, got a lanyard, you know, uh, nice chunky, my first attempt at making a, a what do you call it, a sheath, a bit ropey, a bit rustic. But you know, it's cool, I like it. And uh, yeah, so from the knife, as you can see from this, it's uh, different different size altogether. It's like a full size, if you like, bushy, sort of average bushy knife. But the, um, the, the blank was made by uh, Chris Grant, which is superb. And I handled it myself, and that's also got bird's eye on it with red liners, um, which was my first time attempt at handling a knife, which was great. And uh, scanny grind on it. Those that know Chris, his work, well, you probably recognise the actual profile of that blade. But, uh, I think it's one of his favourite type of profiles. Um, Sorry, Chris, if I'm wrong. <laughs> but no, it's a great bit of kit. This you know, the first proper knife that I ever actually got. Before this, I was just using like the Moras. You know, I'm not saying they're proper knife. They're not proper knives, but uh, yeah, super bit of kit. I actually had this first before I had the other one made. Um, that's why it's got same scales and same coloured liners on it because I kind of like the look of it. Um, no, it's super. It's fits in the hand perfectly. I've got full control over it, um, which is really important when you're dealing. With, you know, you're working with something really, really sharp. I'm a carpenter by trade, and you know, you don't use your tools properly. Then, no, that's when little little accidents start happening. You need to have full control over it. Sitting there, nice, you know, and it does. It's uh, it's a great knife, and I will have it for years, you know. And uh, and I do use it. I don't just you know sit there and polish it up all the time or nothing like that. I I use it. You know, it's a great bit of kit. So that's my day knife, and this will go out on whether I'm out for a week or what have you. That is my main bushy knife tool, what have you. Um, this uh, one of the first. I've had this donkey's years, it's one of the old clippers. 
I, I very rarely use it now. I mean, I was using this before I got that blank from Chris, and that's all I ever used was this. Um, yeah, it's a great little tool. I haven't used it for a while, but I thought I'd show it. I think it's the clipper, they call it, you know. But uh, yeah. But no, I'll probably hang on to that. Um, the other one, I got this one, I think it's the more 2000, something like that. Um, it's got the one with the, which I found quite handy. Um, this is stainless steel, the blade on here, which I thought would be great for when I'm canoeing, you know. I can have this actually sat on my buoyancy aid. I've got like a mesh pocket thing. The buoyancy aid I use is a pull over the top one, and it tightens up at the sides. So it can actually sit on the front of me. It's stainless steel, so you know it's it's easier to care for. It's the one with the two different depths of grind. It's all Scandi, but at the front end, it's a lot more shallower than the butt end. And if I try and get it, you can see it kind of there. It's 2.5 mil thick, and then it narrows down. It's difficult to see, but you, if I give it one of those, you can kind of see that. Yeah. But no, it, um, it's got a good solid handle on it. It's great. This one would sit on my buoyancy yeah, when I'm canoeing, you know. And my main knife for if I'm overnight camping will be in my Medipack for when I actually get to camp and dry land. Then uh, this will go away. And, but it's just handy for when I'm out in the boat. If I want to anchor up when I'm out, have something to eat, food prep with it, and bits and bobs like that. So, yeah. so I do use that, but mainly for canoeing, that sort of stuff. Um, the other little knife I've got is another little necky. It's the it's the Ritter Mark V um, little neck knife. Um, this normally sits in my bag, in the medi bag. Um, the reason I like this is if I'm out and if I, if I go out for a shoot or what have you, mainly, you know, I do a lot of air gunning and stuff like that. And if I want to skin, and prep, you know, gut animals, um, rabbits or what have you, squirrel, immediately or pigeon or whatever the case may be, I always use this. The reason I like it is it's it's small, it's sharp, but the the cool thing with it is it's on this little lanyard, but you know I've got full control of that, especially for skinning game. You know it, it's you know it, it's absolutely superb. I mean you can get right in there, and the other cool thing with it is is you know when if for those of you that do, you know, uh, prepare animals, you know, it's, you can just let it go. So if you need both hands, you know, whether you're removing something from its carcass or you positioning it somewhere else, then you can just let it go and you're not putting the blade on the floor because what I've found with a larger knife, you've got to put it down on the floor. And as soon as you do, I mean, it's it's messy, do you know what I mean? It's, it's going to be covered in what have you, blood and guts I guess. As soon as you put it down on the floor, you've got shite on it, you've got grit on it and leaves, which ain't a problem, but it just, you know, if you're trying to get in there and keep it all clean, ready for cooking, you don't really, do you know what I mean? So I find that superb, I mean, you've got full control over it, you know, you can really, and it's so tiny, like with rabbits and stuff like that and squirrel, you've really got to get in there, you know, and uh, no, it's great. It's uh, superb. And the other cool thing is, there's no handle on it. A lot of people I've seen with these, they will um, power cord wrap the handles, do all sorts of bits and bobs. I've actually seen these with scales on before, which is quite weird. But with that, I can just chuck it. It is O1 steel. I can just chuck this in a, you know, in a pot of water. Give it a good scrub. The only thing that does get really skanky is the the cloth lanyard, you know. But the rest of it, no, it's cleaned instantly, you know, I can clean it and I ain't got to worry about it getting gunky. And halfway through, say, you know, skinning a rabbit, I mean, if it gets really messy, I can just slosh it in a, a little bowl of water, you know. So I've got 
full control over it again it's not going to be slipping around in my hands but um, yeah for those of you that do I would recommend that definitely it's um, it's a great bit of kit superb and the sheath I mean that's it's not going anywhere but I do know people that have used them and I guess this will wear over time um, so what I've always done is you can, you can kind of loop this over through there and around the back there and basically that's locked in you know that's not coming out at all and that's how I normally would have it until I use it you know even if it did and that'll be tucked inside a shirt anyway you know shirts over it so there's less chance of that being caught on anything so yeah that's the the Ritter risk uh, sorry the Ritter RSK Mark 5 so uh, they're pretty cheap about 17 quid so uh, no cool bit of kit I do like it that I'll probably take out you know if I'm out shooting that kind of stuff if I'm out for a few days you know in the canoe or whatever you for fish everything like that I would yeah use that it's superb it's just so easy to keep clean and hygiene is important you know um, that's that bad boy um, right on to the bigger stuff which I don't have a lot of so uh, don't get too excited <laughs> um, if I'm over on an overnight for um, preparing timber you know my wood for my fire stuff like that for shelter or what have you it's the Gravis Force Bucks um, rolled hatchet you've all pretty much seen these ones before it's ideal it's it's light it fits in the pack really well got your lovely little sheath and that with it so keeps an edge really really well that is what I would use See, the, the, the thing I find with people they get their bushy knives and stuff and think, yeah it's I can be you know I'm not gonna bat on with that do you know what I mean why when I can use the tool for what it's actually meant to be used for that's a cutting tool it's not it's not a chopping tool even though it's more than capable you know batoning and stuff like that and I have tried it and no I'd use that you know in combination with that I saw the logs to the length I want and I split them with the axe it don't take five minutes you know batoning is a pain in the butt you know be right back oh, sorry about that someone at the door um, anyway yeah so that's my overnight little uh, wood processor like I said you know um, well, I'm a carpenter by trade anyway and I've learned to use tools for what they really are you know it amazed me in the past that you know I go around a friend's house and he's putting door hinges on with a screwdriver a flathead screwdriver using it as a chisel you know and then pisses and moans because it looks a bit ropey you use a chisel do you know what I mean for chiseling wood not screwdriver you know and I just feel the same way about using I know you can get um, these multi-task survival knives that people what they call them which is fine that's great you know it's designed to chop it's got probably a different areas on the blade three or four different areas on the blade one for fine work one for chopping one for skinning that kind of stuff which is great but it's they're just big and bulky and I'm you know I'm not really into it at all so I don't mind and, and half the time I'm canoeing anyway so I'm not carrying all these on my uh, on my shoulders you know so basically right that's my day wood processing overnight wood, proce wood processing bit of kit um, if I'm out for more than a day then it's the small forest the Grand's Force Grand's Force for us small forest axe which um, you know you all know I mean you've all seen the vids I mean it's a it's a superb bit of kit it's got a lovely weight to it and I've really got to know how to use it properly as well which I think is really important with both of these you know 
I think these probably cause the most accidents, I mean proper accidents out when people go camping or wherever they're doing bushcraft. You know, yeah, people do cut themselves with knives but they're probably little nicks. But you very rarely just get a little nick from something like this. So it is important to use them correctly. You know, I can't stress that enough. Uh, <laughs> a little nick off this is, you know, probably your little dinky missing or, you know, you've got a big sore shin bone. <laughs> I think it's probably a favourite, you know, so yeah. But no, that will go, you know, I take this with me all the time when I do more than a one day overnighty jobby. This is my favourite. Okay, um, when I'm canoeing and stuff, um, if I'm going down like the main rivers and stuff like that, I'd like to sort of come off those main, you know, because years and years ago the rivers were a lot wider and there's still channels that run down the side of rivers, which is the ones I prefer to go down. They're a lot quieter and you get to see a bit more, but a lot of them are overgrown and, and stuff like that. And on the coast, if I'm coming into the inland, you get a lot of water um, based plants, you know, reeds, cattails, that kind of stuff, you know, and to get through it to actually be able to get onto dry land, sometimes you do have to hack your way through, you know. I used to use the, um, it's the British Army issue, I think it's the Gollock. Um, I mean, it's a monster, you know and I have processed wood and everything with this thing before it's, uh, it's a bit uncomfortable, I mean I use this for a long time because of the handle, I have thought about rehandling it but you know it it loves to give you the odd blister, I mean I can feel the blade actually you know above the scales here you know but, um, but no that's a, a small machete type thing it's it's great. It's a bit weighty, so it's ideal for you know processing a bit of wood with it. But what I found it was slightly a little bit short, and you know, because I'm in the canoe, I've I've got to sort of balance myself where I am. I've got kit in there and and so on. So I've got to you know be able to get in reach to clear, you know, to make my channel through. But. Um, that's the only other, I haven't used this for a long while because I've sort of upgraded this to something else which I'll probably get slated for, but uh, here goes. Um, I do have the, the Gerber, um, the Bear Grylls machete, Parang type thing, you know. Okay, the sheath is pretty bomb proof, you know, it's, it's a bit bulky but in the uh, in the canoe, chucked in the canoe, it's fine. You know, I can have this coming off the gunnels. It's it's quite cool. Um, right, but for clearing, for you know, for ground clearing, that kind of stuff. I mean, this is great. You can't use an axe for ground ground clearing, and you can't really use your knife. You can do it, but. It's just hard work, you know, I make it difficult. Um, but for the reeds and the cattails and stuff out on the river, this is superb. I mean, it just, you know, I haven't cleaned it at all since I've been using it and stuff. Um, keeps the edge all right. Um, it's not that thick. It's around three mil, I think. Two and a half, three, well, best part of three mil thick. It's, I think it's O1 steel, if I remember what was on the, the packet that it came in. There's a lot of people have said about the handle, saying, oh, it's plastic, it's rubbish, blah, blah, blah. The end parts of this handle, yeah, it's like this hard plastic nylon. But this piece here is actually like a, a rubbery, and it is actually quite comfortable, and you can actually choke up on it using the, the lanyard. You can get that extra bit of distance on it which is a damn sight more than what I could have got with the Glock, the Glock, sorry. And, um, no, it's cool. Um, yeah, I'll probably get stick for it, but, uh, 
it, it's just one of those. It works, you know, it's a parang at the end of the day. It's not a chopping axe, so I'm not going to go out and spend four hours chopping up a piece of log with it. This is what I was saying earlier about tools are meant for something. This is not for meant, you know, no parang is meant for chopping really thick, dense timbers. It's if you think about where they come from in the world, you know, they're, you know, it's bamboo and it's it's vines, that kind of stuff, which is soft materials, you know. So it's what they're designed for. So, you know, I wouldn't bat on anything with this. There's no point, I have the axe with me and and so on. But for clearing, you know, if this goes in the dirt, I'm not bothered, you know, because if you're doing low land clearing, then yeah, you are gonna get it you are going to miss now and then and hit the soil, you know, so what, you know, that's, what it's, that's what it's all about isn't it, that's what it's for, but um, for what I use it for, it works well and it's really light and yeah, you could, you know, spend half an hour and you don't start suffering from fatigue, which can then cause accidents and stuff like that, so yeah, there's my clank the shame, <laughs> but it does work, so 50. That's pretty much it. That's my my little cutting tool tool collection that I have, um, and I have no real urge to update anything at the moment. I'm happy with my main knives. Um, I'm happy with my axes, and I'm happy with my my little ground grounds clearer. You know, vegetation clearer, which is superb. So I do have an older knife which I've had for a while, which I never get to use, and that's the uh, that British Army um, survival knife, which is an absolute monster. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you could probably cut a bit of oak with that if you had a decent edge on it. I mean, it's just I don't know, is it five, six mil thick? It's just a monster, I and mean, it's so weighty. Um, I mean, great as a prize bar, you know, <laughs> and a chopper, but no digging tool. But uh, yeah, too big. No, I mean, that is just, I just find that too big. So that kind of just sits in a box and uh, stays there forever more. <laughs> yeah. So there's my cutting tools. I um, hope that was cool. And I can't think of anything else to say. So. Uh, Catch you later.